Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide, where today we're here at Universal Studios Florida. I absolutely love this park and I cannot wait to get back on Rip Ride Rocket. Oh, I'm excited for stepping back into the wisdom world of Harry Potter today. Of course, Diagon Alley is located in this park and we'll have a ride on Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. Oh, I absolutely love that ride. The theming is so good. There's some other brilliant rides in this park, Transformers, E.T. and many more awesome attractions. And of course, come along and join us for everything that this park has to offer. It's always wonderful seeing the iconic archways here at the entrance of the park as we make our way in this morning. Yeah, hours are actually 8 a.m. through until 5. And yeah, 5 just seemed quite early. However, of course, it is because of Halloween Horror Nights. And we'll have a vlog coming up from HHN. So, of course, stay tuned for that. And as we've already shown in a previous vlog this trip, as soon as you walk into the park now, you enter Minion Land. And yeah, we did experience the new attraction, Illumination's Villain Con Minion Blast, a few days ago. So make sure you check out that vlog if you haven't already seen it. Oh, and here it is. We're going to start off our day with a ride on Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket just over here. Of course, manufactured by Mara. And yeah, this coaster is certainly an experience. Look at it here on the skyline there. It really does look the part. So it makes its way up into the non-inverting loo. I love this ride, it is so good. <laughs> That's gonna start off, it doesn't look too busy this morning. Of course, everything needs to go in a locker. No on-ride filming here, unfortunately, other than a couple of smaller bits. Uh, and yeah, the lockers are free at this park uh, whilst you ride. 10 minute advertised wait for Rip Ride Rocket. And of course, you also need to go through the security scanners before you ride as well. So make sure you've not even got your phone in your pocket. But yeah, we'll go and ride. Put in some off-ride shots. Minute wait there this morning for Rip Ride Rocket, and I tell you what, that coaster it is so much fun, isn't it? I absolutely love Rip Ride Rocket, <laughs> but part of that is because of the onboard audio and sandstorms on there now. So we're going da -da 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 as we went around, it was so much fun. Yeah, they've changed it now. There used to be more choice for music, but yeah, there's only five options now, but you can still pick your genre. Uh, but no, it is a good fun ride. Of course, you've got the uh, non inverting loop just there, uh, a good first drop. Then after that, it's some really funky twists and turns and drops. I like the section where you kind of drop down through the tunnel. You saw some off-ride shots of that just. It is a good ride. It is quite rough. You need to make sure you ask for the front row. And that's a good thing here at Universal. They will let you wait for the front, which is good. Which is really good. I absolutely love Rip Ride Rocket at night when you see all the lights. It's just fantastic. Yeah, it's definitely a dark ride. But you know what? It's good still doing it in the daytime. And it certainly looks the part here on the skyline. I do feel like, though, it's one of the weaker coasters at the resorts. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see this changed or removed at some point in the future and replaced with something else. <laughs> Look at the panda up there on the roof. <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> Literally going to the restrooms just over here. Oh, we got the panda up there. Oh, part of Jimmy Fallon. That's the best part of that ride. <laughs> got some live entertainment just here as well. That's what I do love about Universal. Lots of street entertainment in this park. They were stunning. We should do some production shots for advertisement purposes. Dina, if you want to be in a photo with our cast, here's what we're going to do. Really adds to the part that's having moments like that, doesn't it? Like we walk around the corner, we saw the panda, then you got the little show going on. Uh, there's actually a pharaoh just walking around there from the mummy. I think that's going to be our next ride, Revenge of the Mummy. 
This is a brilliant indoor roller coaster manufactured by Premier Rides. It's got launches, it's got fire, it's got special effects. We love the mummy, don't we? I absolutely love this. I just want to put a little point out. If you have got your park tickets on your phone, you can get these little tickets and these will open the lockers for you. Yeah, so that's ideal, isn't it? They'll just give you a team member, will give you one and of those. And that will work all day. So I just put it in the little pouch so I can take it on the rides. That's ideal. Right, let's go and have a ride here on the mummy. It's a shame they don't allow on ride filming here uh, because it would be great to show you these experiences because they really are world class rides. Rides, especially the mummy. Yeah, normally at Universal, when an attraction says it's got a 10 minute wait, that normally means it's walk on, which is good. Very atmospheric, this queue line. I've actually got some interactives as well, which really makes it. So this is really cool. We can actually give these all a jump scare just over here. There we go. <laughs> and you can watch the reaction just on there. As expected, it's a walk on. We'll see you when we come up. Revenge of the mummy. Absolutely love Revenge of the Mummy. One of the best indoor roller coasters anywhere in the world, in my opinion. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic in there with all the fire and the effects. I like when that mummy comes out his tomb and he's like, Rrr. and it's a show coaster as well, isn't it? It's not all big thrills on there. You start off with some slower scenes. Uh, you go through loads of massive fire effects in there. The theming is just so good in there, and it's like big scale sets as well. It's got turntables. It goes backwards, and my favourite scene is like a fake station that you go into, and you hear like a, the ride operator's voice, and you think that's the end then the window drops the mummy's there uh, and then you get all the fire in the ceiling as well oh that scares me that does like looking up you get like a sprinkler come over and then all the fire yeah it's brilliant that is then of course you drop down into a smoke effect it's a brilliant ride it's hard to explain it you need to come and experience it uh but yeah i do love revenge of the mummy and uh, yeah i'd love something like that back home so here's hoping uh that of course secret weapon 9 project horizon at alton towers will be something like that i mean i'm not expecting it to be of course as heavily themed and effects wise we are here at university after all um, but still um, I think that would be a, a great addition to the UK something like that even if it is done on more of a budget but yeah we're doing really well so far we're gonna make our way down here now towards the wizarding world of Harry Potter for Harry Potter and the escape from Gringotts love all these facades around here as well and of course this completely transforms for Halloween Horror Nights at this time of year it runs every year September um, through to November and yeah it is a fantastic event it really is and you realize just how good of a job they do you walk around this park in the daytime other than seeing a few tents and a few lights around and um, you can't see that much but then at night it completely transforms and so does the atmosphere as well oh, it's always great seeing the awesome facades down here of Kings Cross of course that's the train station and yeah that connects over to the other park islands of adventure and we'll have our vlog coming up from there and of course have a ride on the hogwarts express soon too as well we might get that in today actually so i do really like the hogwarts express and we've not been on it yet this trip And of course, what's great about Diagon Alley is there's no like massive sign here saying the wisdom world of Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. You just kind of discover it and walk through the gaps in the buildings just here. I'll always remember when Charlotte came for the first time, Aww. 2019. That was so emotional because it was just so beautiful to see. It's kind of walking around the wall here and you step into this immersive world. Welcome to Diagon Alley. And what really makes it as well is how cold it is in this area. They pump like air conditioning into the area to make it actually feel like the UK. And of course all these shops you can go into and like it's a huge scale area this is. We've also got a little indoor area that you can walk through off to the side. And of course the signature attraction and Gringotts Bank just down there, of course. Gringotts. Another indoor roller coaster. 
Lots of special effects on this one. Heavy use of screens. Well, there's a lot of props in here too. And of course, every so often the dragon will breathe fire as well, which is a fantastic effect. Yeah, this is one that's got a single rider queue. And I just want to point out that quite a few of the rides here do have single rider queues, which is great if you do want to reduce your wait time. But it's only 15 minutes anyway, so that probably means it's about five. So. I love this ride. The only thing with this, if you do single rider, you do miss the pre-show and all of the great theming in the queue line. So I'd recommend for your first time doing it, always do the main queue. It's 15 minutes, let's go and take you along in the queue line. Of course, we'll have our ride. It is stunning when you walk into here. Look at this, wow. Welcome to Gringotts. This is beautiful, I always remember them, my first time seeing this in here and just being blown away. Uh, all the animatronics down here at the side, all the desks. And of course the huge chandelier as well, it is stunning. To have your Gringotts identification photo taken. Then, proceed to the large office at the end of the corridor. And if you are a Harry Potter fan, it really is the ultimate experience here. And as much as you've got Forbidden Journey, of course it's over in the other park, and also um, the Wisdom World, you can find um, the Wisdom World at other Universal Parks, however Gringotts and Diagon Alley is only here. One of my favourite things is the newspapers and how they actually move on there. The Weasley's Wildfire whiz bangs. Fireworks from my brother's friend George. Dilbrys, what are you doing here? This is my office, Mordak. The question is, what are you doing here? I was about to show our new clients the vault. I'll just get in the keys. Ah, well, I move them. All you have to do is ask. Accio keys. Hmm. How did you get in here? We haven't seen well, you. Well, well, let me keep you from your tour. I just need to pick up a few things and I'll be on my way. Well, what are we talking about? Well, let's get moving. Now, listen to me. The passage to your left will take you to a pair of lifts. The lifts will take you down to the cart station. There you will board a cart for the journey to the vaults beneath the Gringotts. show heading down and looks like we're just pulling into the cart station when you exit the lift be sure to pick up a pair of safety boxes to be worn at all times that really does start the experience off fantastic and yeah worth pointing out if you do single rider you do miss all of that so yeah it's worth for your first time at least seeing all the pre-show but yeah we'll see when we come off it's been walk on Gringotts. Well, we just stepped off the absolutely epic Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts. It really is one of the best indoor rides anywhere in the world. The technology of that from Intamin really is fantastic, isn't it? Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. When you're such a huge Harry Potter fan, going around and seeing the sets is so good. It's roller coaster meets dark ride, and of course you've got a tilt track in there, you've got a launch through a screen, which is really cool, and uh, yeah, the practical sets are fantastic in there. The scale of it as you're going around, seeing like all the vaults is amazing. And then of course you've got the screens as well, 
You do wear 3D glasses. I wish that you didn't have to wear those. I agree. I think it'd be better without the 3D glasses. But uh, you know what? It's a fantastic ride. It really is. It's very impressive. It's the atmosphere of walking down the queue line as well. The pre-show with the fake lift. And of course, the station's amazing too. But yeah, on-ride is fantastic. It's really long as well. Uh, so much to see. It's a shame we can't take you along for the experience on there. Uh, but I do love it. And there's the technology of it as well. Um, you don't realise how much effort went into designing something like that. All the timings, all the special effects. Like, for example, on the screen when you see the dragon and uh, then you've actually got a heat blasting at you and yeah, stuff like you that. Yeah you do, you feel the heat hit your face, it's all those little details that really make the ride. Onboard sound and the carts as well, it's very comfortable uh, with a light bar restraint. But uh, yeah, it's like dark ride meets roller coaster and it's absolutely awesome. I love just walking around this area and yeah, going in the different shops. I think we'll kind of have a little stroll through some of them, shall we? I love that. You love the shops, I don't you? <laughs> She's going on about Squidward, who oh she wants. Oh my god, we need to show you. So they've got like this Squidward plush toy, and I absolutely <laughs> love it. It's so cute. He's over in City Walk. You know, we're doing a vlog from there, so stay tuned for it. Yeah, it's beautiful around here. Let's go in a few different shops, shall we, and show you the full experience. And yeah, of course, you can buy the robes, you can buy the wands, and actually, if you get the wands, you can interact with some of the features around the Wisdom World as well. Let's go have a look in here, shall we? Shall us in! <laughs> I love all the little details in the shops. Just so much thought went into all of this, it really did. Have you got over here? Come on, you pixie. <laughs> This area just feels so alive and atmospheric, it really does. Of course, you've got the shows that happen around here as well. That sounds really good in here, kind of echoing off the roof. The acoustics are fantastic. so nice to come here during a quieter time as well and just walk around the area like look at this uh, in terms of crowd level this is not busy at all here sometimes you can come in this area and it is so busy you struggle to walk around we've got the sugar plum sweet shop just over here i do love some of the treats i really do it's gonna look in oh charlotte's going for it <laughs> Boy, it always smells so good when you come into here as well Chocolate frog. Oh, look, what's at the top there? The cauldron. Oh, yeah. If you are coming here, be prepared. That cauldron is rubber. You cannot eat it. Yeah, Charlotte thought you could eat it, and I did as well. I yeah, <laughs> that happened at Universal Studios Hollywood. Yeah, it's there at the top. Cauldron cake. <laughs> I'll always remember Charlotte's Don't disappointment. Say. It's always one of the highlights for me of Universal, uh, walking around these shops. Wow, look at this in here. There's just so much going on to look at and of course look at there in the sea and all the fireworks as well. It's just so well done, it really is. And it makes you very excited for the next instalment of the Wisdom World that's been built down at the new Epic Universe theme park. And yeah, we're going to be checking out that with a construction update so stay tuned for that coming up here on Theme Park Worldwide. You can buy the Nimbus 2000. <laughs> what are you going to do with that when we get it out? Fly around the house? <laughs> Beautiful area and it's so nice just to be able to see space in here and just enjoy it all. I remember when I came out here in 2014 when this opened, it was packed full of people, it really was. Hours upon hours of waiting for Gringotts. Oh yeah, it's beautiful around here. And of course, don't forget a visit to Nocturne Alley as well. Just over here on the left-hand side. Now, it's beautifully themed in here, but this is also a great place to escape the heat. For the air conditioning.
they just get the lighting perfect as well. creepy and atmospheric in this shot. Look at the scale of it though. And of course the Harry Potter music is amazing too. It's my favourite ever movie music. And it really fits the area beautifully. Brilliant in here. And here's my top tip for you. If you don't fancy forking out on an expensive wand, just stand behind someone else who activates the effect and then you can enjoy it as well. Always amazing stepping back into Diagon Alley, one of the best themed areas anywhere in the world. And it's here at Universal Studios Florida. Of course, I love how it's connected as well with the Hogwarts Express. I think we'll try and get that in later on. Lunch time for Charlotte then now. Oh, I absolutely love these. So this is the shepherd's pie jacket potato. These are so good. Yeah, and you can get these just outside Diagon Alley here. Oh, I absolutely love these. I love being able to get a jacket potato in America. Yeah, and how much are these? That was 11.70 with tax. Yeah, so quite expensive, but, it is, but you know, food out here is expensive. a lot, isn't it? it? Is, yeah. So you enjoy it, that's all that matters. I can't wait. Oh, I love this view looking out over the lake just here. And they're actually working on a new nighttime spectacular at the moment that's probably going to launch at some point early next year. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Great view down towards Whip Ride Rocket at the front of the park. Of course, we're now down here at the back. Yeah, we've still got ET to get on, Transformers later, the Simpsons around there. But first, we're off to see Men in Black on board Alien Attack just over here. Interactive dark ride, this one, which is good fun. Some great props in here as well. And yeah, the ride vehicle actually spins round, which is fantastic. Nice lunch, Charlotte. Oh, that was so nice. I really enjoy those. You like a good jacket potato. Oh, that's one thing that I missed, so that was really nice. <laughs> hey, yeah, let's go and give this a go. It's a massive show building with this. It's a big ride, like massive props in here. Attention, this is the Alien Attack Ride. Please stand by for immigration in the That's me and Charlotte after a day at the parks. <laughs> in the break room. Not with you, Joni, am I right? You need to learn the difference between aliens and you. Let's begin with these happy couples. Little do these fellows know that the gals they're bringing home to mom is just one of the intergalactic rebels. See, it's another team of MIB rookies. Do right knows that if MIB scanners show the emotion we have a full of aliens. Good fun, Men in Black Alien Attack, and it's a huge ride as well with so much going on, isn't it? Oh, it made me feel sick that did the spin, and I felt like I was on a waltzer. It does feel like that, doesn't it? Because you actually a target on the back of each ride vehicle, and you can shoot the opponent, and it means you spin round. I mean, the scenes where you spin round anyway. Oh, but there's loads going on in there, some big scale set pieces, loads of props, um, there's hardly any screens at all in there. No, which is really good. There's some fantastic feeling in there, but I lost. Oh, oh no. there's some really high scores in there, like they're popping out of windows and everything. In. Go over the ones that are not as obvious in there. Oh, thank you. Oh. So then I'll beat you next time we go on. A little tip for you. I got one in a window and it gave me like 40,000 points. I that because yours went up really fast. Oh, you got to know where they are. But yeah, that's Men in Black Alien Attack. Great ride down here at the back of the park. Now, of course, Universal Orlando is home to some absolutely fantastic rides. However, not everything can be brilliant. And yeah, one of those weaker attractions, in our opinion, is the Simpsons ride. In fact, we rarely go on it, but it is only a 15 minute wait today. So we're going to give this a go. Yeah, it's a simulator style ride. You got this big facade. You actually got a roller coaster train out the front. First time we came, Charlotte thought it was going to be a coaster. I actually thought it was. I did not know what it was before we came. The facade is so good and I was so disappointed. <laughs> yeah, we don't go on it very often. It's quiet 
here today. Let's give it a ride. Let's enter Krusty Land and of course go on the Simpsons ride. <laughs> Well, we just did our ride on the Simpsons ride. Yeah, we only waited about 10 minutes. You got a couple of pre-shows there, which just take time. However, you get onto the ride system itself, and yeah, it kind of lifts up into an IMAX screen. You don't need to wear 3D glasses or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it's quite rough, isn't it, the ride? Oh my God, I thought I was going to be sick. I had to take my hat off and put it over my face. I forgot to take my motion sickness tablets today. Oh, no. I know, but the actual like visuals are really good. And I do like the concept. There's some funny jokes in there. Yeah, it's just not an amazing attraction, is no, it, that one? It's like Homer's like, I can see my car on the car boy. It's just so funny. All rides exit in the gift shop. Oh, but. So there is some funny references, but yeah, it's not anything that impressive. And of course, yeah, motion sickness on there can be quite bad for people. You got Qu Twirl and Hurl, not Quirl and Hurl, Twirl and Hurl just over here as well. Little spinning ride. This is something you don't have much of in this park at all, and that's flat rides. I'd love to see Universal kind of go more down the uh, flat rides route as well. I mean, they've got a lot of dark rides. Imagine like a, a pendulum ride, a gyro swing, or something like that in this park. Uh, that would be fantastic. But yeah, the Simpsons area is really nice. I mean, the facade's brilliant for that. And then, of course, you've got all the little shops down here. You've got the Quickie Mart just on the left. You've got Moe's as well. And yeah, they do really good food um, inside there on the left-hand side. It's a quick service restaurant, um, which is great. You can get a Duff beer down here as well. And yeah, just overall, the theming's really good. Oh, for my lunch here in the Simpsons area, gone for fish and also tater tots. And yeah, it was $18. That's without a drink. And uh, yeah, it's about 14 pounds. You get three uh, pieces of fish and the tater tots. Yeah, as we said in quite a few of the vlogs, food is very expensive here in Florida. Oh, food was really nice. I enjoyed that a lot. And yeah, it wouldn't be a visit to this park without coming and showing you the Back to the Future section just here. Of course, the Simpsons ride used to be themed to Back to the Future back in the day. Never did it though, but you tell you what, I'm a big Back to the Future fan. Oh, look at that, you got the DeLorean just there. And of course, the actual train carriage from the final part of the trilogy, Back to the Future Part 3. Look at that just there. Always amazing to come and see it. And of course, yeah, you got this lovely waterfront location. Yeah, they're developing a new nighttime show. They've been testing drones. So yeah, that'll be interesting to see what that's going to be like at some point in the future. Yeah, it's really nice looking out over the park here. But we're going to an absolute classic next. It opened in 1990. And yeah, of course, the opening year of this park. It's E.T. the Adventure. Waiting about five minutes so far, just been through the little pre-show. And yeah, you just give your name over now so E.T. can say it at the end of the ride. And this is one of the rides that we can actually take you along on as well as we sit up on our bikes. But we don't need to pedal. <laughs> Very immersive in here for its time as well. And this will always remain one of my favourite attractions in the whole of the Universal Orlando. Not just the nostalgia, but also all the practical sets. Uh oh, Bravo. We've got some unauthorised people entering the base. Wait, they got ET. They're getting away. Unit three, cut them off. I love how Ratchet just suspended here from the ceiling. There's ET in the basket. Oh. 
Where E.T. says our name. That is by far one of my favourite rides out of both the parks here at Universal Orlando. It's the nostalgia of it, but also the ride system, which is really unique with the bikes, the theming, the lighting, the audio, the smells. It comes together in a fantastic overall package, doesn't it? Oh, I absolutely love sitting on the bikes. It's just so unique. It's such a fun attraction. It is. I hope they never take it out. I know ET is not as relevant as some of the other brands now, but you know what? People still love it, and I really like that. It's all the practical sets in there, which are brilliant. And you may have just noticed Shrek and Donkey there behind us as well. Like I, I said, that. Donkey, like that. Donkey. Well, that's because this is going to be a new DreamWorks area opening next year. If you remember before, uh, there used to be an area here for kids with Woody Woodpecker theming and a few other bits. However, um, that's been rethemed. And yeah, the coaster's still there. That's going to be something new. And along with that, there's a big new structure going in here. It could be like Shrek Swamp as you walk in. And yeah, going to be all DreamWorks characters. Yeah, that's the new addition for 2024. For, uh, coming here to Universal Studios Florida. So there's quite a lot of construction going on. I also feel like they're going to move the entrance to ET maybe off to the side here um, just so yeah it's a bit better because it's quite cramped down there. And we're just in the Spongebob store now right next door and here he is. I love this. I've been going on about Squidward for days. Oh you really want him don't you? I really like him. He's so lovely. What do you like about him so much? I love his nose. I love how big his head is. I love his tentacles. I love his price tag. I love you his love his price tag? I don't like the price though. Yeah, it's, it's only $22. Oh plus tax, plus tax. Oh. <laughs> One of the reasons that I love coming to Florida in September is because of crowd levels. I mean, look at this, the pathway is nice and quiet on these weekdays, which is brilliant. You've got the horror makeup show just over there, which is fantastic. However, you've got my favorite show at Universal, and one of the best theme park shows I've ever seen just down there, and that's the Bourne Stuntacular, and we're gonna be heading into that shortly. We can't film it, sadly, much like most things in this park, um, but yeah, it is brilliant and definitely not to be missed. Of course, you got Rip Ride Rocket down there as well, and look at the pathways. Lovely and quiet, isn't it? Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. So low crowd. How's the voice holding up, Charlotte? It's not good, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Oh, no, all the talking, that's what it is. Oh, no, that's what it is. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you get a nice relax on the cruise next week, oh, though, before Disney. So that'll be nice. And we're making our way into this massive show building just here now. It's on two levels, this ride. It's Transformers, and I absolutely love this. Another brilliant dark ride. Of course, it is very screen heavy, uh, but uh, I do really like it. It's one of the best screen-based rides that I've done. There is some props around, though, as well. <laughs> Well, 
I've just come off Transformers The Ride, and yeah, we actually used single rider there because the main queue was a little bit longer. That's the good thing here. There's loads of single rider queues. And of course, Charlotte had a very special ride there. I literally had a breakdown and the lights came on and then we actually went backwards through the scenes and I went down the elevator and then went took a shortcut back into the station. So you didn't actually do the full ride, no, did you? No, I didn't get to finish it all, but they gave me an express pass. Oh, that's good. I mean, there was only about 15 minutes of downtime. I got sat in my seat, but then got took off and put behind the air gates. Charlotte here had the full behind the scenes. I know. I thought you was on like one behind me. I was like, oh, I bet Sean's loving this. I didn't realize you didn't get it. People have paid good money for that. But, oh, it was uh, so cool to see. In terms of the ride though, it is fantastic. I do really like it. It's quite rough and jolty, isn't it, it with is. the ride system on there, especially now it's getting a little bit older, but I do really like it. Massive screens in there. Uh, of course, you're wearing your 3D glasses. The effects are really good. feels like you're stepping straight into the Transformers movie. Uh, and it's great, it really is. You've got Bumblebee and like Megatron and everything right in front of you. And it's right there, which is fantastic. And then some really Really good effects. I mean, what I like with that is you put some large props in front of the screens, and it's hard to tell what's real and what's not. It's very well done that ride. Oh, I'm so jealous that Charlotte got that. Oh. I knew you would be. It was so strange because we started going backwards, and I was like, "What is happening?" And then you go down that lift like really slow with the lights, and I was like, "Oh, Sean's gonna love this if you didn't get it." <laughs> Amazing ride system though that is, like especially uh, that it can do all that, and it like, actually skips out scenes like if it breaks down yeah, as well. I didn't really that because we was coming through backwards we must have done it so it was quicker to get back to the station yeah like that's amazing that is yeah. now of course universal have currently got a jurassic park a tribute store just over here so we're gonna have a walk through here now of course celebrating 30 years of the classic jp so let's have a walk through wow look at this here and of course it will be running for a limited time and of course you've got the halloween horror nights tribute store as well which is over at the other side of the park but yeah look at this in here yeah, there's rumours that one of these tribute stores is going to turn into an Epic Universe preview centre at some point in the near future. So yeah, that'll be really good. Possibly in here or on the other side. That's so cool. <laughs> Remote control. Some great photo opportunities in here. And considering these are like pop-up shops, they do a really good job. Wow, look at that. Love all the props that they've got in here and photo opportunities. Wow. Oh, look at the bag, that is so cool. That's nice, that is, isn't that it? Is lovely. Of course, we've got Jurassic Park River Adventure coming up and, of course, Velocicoaster as well. Oh, we have. In Islands of Adventure next door. Oh, really that's nice. Good. The model, yeah, that's fantastic, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. Just thought we'd uh, take you through the tribute store. Fantastic. Hey, we got the mystery machine out over here as well. So cool. Oh, I love that. And here's the guy. There's Fred. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> that's Scooby. Hey. Oh, this is great. Seeing loads of street theatre and entertainment and meet and greets going on, which is awesome. And talking of entertainment, we're about to go and see the absolutely awesome Born Stuntacular over here. It's not to be missed. From the outside, it doesn't look like much, but this is one of the best theme park shows you'll ever see. So we're going to go and watch this now. When we come out, I think we're going to go and have a treat from the little Today Cafe over there. Well, you just watched the Bourne Stuntacular and it's absolutely spectacular, it really is. Oh, the screen quality on there is absolutely brilliant and the special effects, it's such a good show. You wouldn't realise that a lot of what you're watching is a screen because basically you walk in the theatre, massive screen at the back, the highest quality screen I've ever seen. And then along with that, they've got various different props that come out in front of it. And then of course the actors, but it's really good how that's put together. It's hard to explain it, you've just got to come and watch it when you come here. Uh, they strictly don't allow any photos or videos 
shows, but in a way it would ruin the surprise would, yeah. um, because that show it is absolutely epic. It's a 20 minute spectacular uh, with so much going on, and along with that, you've got like real fire effects in there, you've got all the gunshots, they've got cars in it. Um, it just all comes together in a brilliant overall production. But yeah, I love that so much, I really Definitely do. Definitely do not miss it because it's just brilliant. Yeah, I feel like so many people don't really see it because you know the facade's not like massive or anything. It's also got quite a long, drawn out pre show, which is about seven or eight minutes. So some people even bail at that point. Don't do that. Make sure you see it. Oh, it's amazing. It really is. One of my favourite parts of the whole resort. Well, considering it's only 25 past two, we've done loads today in this park. Brilliant time to come for the crowd levels. And yeah, I'm ready for a little bit of a snack now. What are you having, Charlotte? Oh, I'm going to go to this cake shop around the corner and see what they've got. Oh, fantastic. And yeah, you've got the Today Cafe just here as well. They do some nice chocolate eclairs in here. I might see what they've got around the corner then. If not, come and get one of those. Oh, look at all these treats. I'll tell you what, the parks in Florida do some amazing treats. And look at these here, you've got the big donuts as well. Oh, look at all these, so much choice. Oh, I love fudge as well. I'm not fancying fudge today, but I do like it. <laughs> oh, what are you going for then, Charlotte? This is the Mr. Boo cookie. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, you were six thirty-nine. Oh, so expensive. Oh, no. oh, I feel like prices have gone up even more for food now. Where I saw they've got like a Jaws cake, but it was in like a fancy like pot, and I thought I'm not going for that. I didn't have a price on, so I went for this biscuit. Yeah, I went for the uh, red velvet cupcake here, and that was 6 39 That's the thing you've got to add the tax on. But yeah, this looks really nice. Not had one of these from here before. Oh, look at that gorgeous blue sky, and that cake was really nice. I did enjoy that. It was very creamy. But yeah, we're back here now in Minion Land, and we did film that video from the new attraction, uh, so make sure you check it out on the channel. But of course there is the other Minions attraction and that's Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem, only on a 10 minute wait. This used to get massive queues, I mean I know it's a quiet day today, but at least now for the busy days, there's two Minion attractions right opposite each other, uh, so it'll help with the queues. I mean that's on 15 minutes, this is on 10, don't really go on this very often, it's nothing spectacular, but yeah we're going to have a ride. We're just trying to keep things interesting. Okay, just, just be still, don't say any more words. <coughs> These are my daughters. Say hello briefly. Hello out there. Minions. Hey, oh, we've just come off Minions. Only wait about five minutes. <laughs> there we are, they're on the screen. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really a huge fan of simulator rides. However, it's okay, isn't it, though? Yeah, I don't mind it. It's better because you haven't got to wear the 3D glasses. Yeah, you used to, though, but now yeah, you don't, which is I, good. I think we came in 2019 that we had to wear them. It's much better that you don't have to wear them now. The video content on there is pretty good, though, isn't it? It is, but the ride system, it probably bashes you about. Yeah, it does. Like, it shakes you around loads oh, on there. Yeah. But people like the Minions. Yeah, they're popular they're IP, so aren't they? Cute, aren't they? Yeah, and, you know, it's okay. It's not the worst ride out there. It's certainly better than what we're about to go on now. Like I say, there's some great things at this resort but there's also quite a few poor rides and yeah the worst ride in the whole resort in my opinion is our next one it's race through new york starring jimmy fallon just over here hand hand <laughs> that's the best part of it look at this absolutely deserted in here and I can see why. It's a very weak attraction, this one. Hopefully it doesn't stick about for too long. I think after Epic Universe, there'll be a few rides in this park especially that they'll make changes to or remove. Let's make our way upstairs. All this holding area that was put in. I remember the first time I did it, you know, it was quite busy when it was new. Yeah, not now. I'm sure it's got a little friend just here. Like the panda. <laughs> we didn't see him in the pre-show in there, did we? And that's the thing with that, there's quite a lot of waiting. You go into another pre-show and then, yeah, of course, Jimmy Fallon comes on. You're at his show in New York. And uh, yeah, you've got like the applause sign and like a bit of a behind the scenes look at the show. And then you step onto the simulator ride itself uh, with Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem that we did just. That's like individual simulators. With this one, it's one big simulator. You wear your 3D glasses and literally go on a race through New York City. Oh, I really didn't enjoy that. I found myself switching off. 
off but I also found the simulator needs a bit of TLC it wasn't looking very good yeah they're normally really good at like maintaining things here presentations fantastic yeah it looks in a really bad state on there makes me think maybe are they plan on removing it at some point not too sure but it didn't look great in there no it's not even that old of a ride but yeah it's one of the weaker attractions that they've put in um, here at Universal they had that period you know where things weren't great uh, but luckily now they're putting in much better additions like Velocicoaster and the whole new theme park that's been built Epic Universe but so, yeah my favourite part of that used to be the pre-show when they had like the singers in there and the panda but we didn't see him in there oh, I love the panda but we did see him waving out the window yeah maybe he was having a bit of fresh air <laughs> We've seen so much entertainment today. Really makes it when you're walking around the park, especially on an off-peak day as well. Fantastic to see. Well, from one mediocre attraction to another now, and that's Fast and Furious Supercharged. However, I do enjoy this more than Jimmy Fallon. And uh, yeah, the things with this, it took up such a massive space. And yeah, it really should have been a ride similar to Test Track up at Epcot, in my opinion. An actual proper ride, you know, where you sit in a car and go round instead of on like a tour bus. Um, yeah, it's okay, this is, but it's nothing spectacular. There was rumours during the pandemic that this ride wasn't actually going to reopen after. I mean, it was just rumours, but I think that that's the thing now, Universal look at some of the mistakes that they made a few years ago and thought like, what are we doing? Luckily, uh, they've kind of regained a lot of people's trust since then, haven't they? That's the issue, this building is absolutely massive and like Sean said, you expect there to be a big ride in there, but there just isn't. Yeah, it's not amazing is it, this one. You get on a tour bus and go for a journey round. The best part is the queue line on this one, which we can show you. Advertise wait time of only 15 minutes. And that's the thing, they might have some mediocre attractions in this park, but if you come out off peak times, you're not waiting for them. It's okay when you walk on. To be honest, it's been quite a few years since I've done all the rides in this park like this. Uh, normally we'll either skip them and make the most of the really good rides or park up a lot. But we thought this time, with us having more time here at Universal, we'd do a full park vlog for each park instead of kind of doing a two-part Universal Orlando vlog. You know, we're we'll staying on site this time at Cabana Bay. We've done Volcano Bay this time, which has been really nice. And of course, we've still got Islands of Adventure to come up as well. And of course, Horror Nights down here. So yeah, we've had a really good time kind of bringing you the full universal experience. How awesome is the queue line though? Like all the cars down here, the vehicles, it's pumping tunes. <laughs> I don't know we'll be singing though with our voices today. I don't know why we started to lose our voices. Yeah, I can't believe it. It's getting worse. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> We'll see when we come off. Party. Bye, Mia. Bye, Mia. All right, Pat. Let's get these people on their way. Send them over to the war room. You got a bus? Peace. Peace. The people on the buses are just sure to continue to stall it. Stop yeah, calling. Okay. Don, what up? Judge, yeah. just got a heads up from Oz. The FBI is about to raid their location. Oh, no, not again. Man, they always ruining our fun. Every Wednesday. They're leading Owen Shaw right to your door. Owen Shaw? Who is that? Yeah. That cockroach we beat down in Spain? Oh yeah, yeah. What's he got to do with this? Yeah. Nothing yet. Oh good. Yeah, so as you've just seen, he goes through two pre-shows, quite drawn out, but they have got actors, which makes it instead of just watching a screen. Such a big franchise like Fast and Furious can have such a poor ride is beyond me. I can't believe that ever got passed off. It just seems to really drag on, doesn't it, that so one? From going into the actual queue line to getting on the ride, it just seems to take ages. And just not a lot really happens. And you think, oh, you know, it's going to get going, you get on the party bus. The first scene is probably the best in there because it's quite a, a large scale set, you know, floor to ceiling, massive buildings. And then you go around the corner um, and you just sat there kind of waiting. The most exciting thing is a car that lifts up. Um, and then, yeah, you make your 
your way into like a projection room um, where you're in there for a few minutes. There's some visuals, there's some effects, um, and then that's the end of the ride. Such a waste of a massive building like that. And I do think the fact that, you know, the park are building at Hollywood uh, a roller coaster of a Fast and Furious. I'd love to see them put that Fast and Furious coaster in that spot in the future. Definitely, that would be such a better investment. Yeah, it would, because yeah, it's such a poor ride that. And for the space it takes up in a park that really hasn't got much room here as well. Uh, but anyway, we've done really well in this park, haven't we, we today? Have. I'm so pleased. Oh, we've got round, we've done all the best bits, we've done some of the poorer attractions as well, but it's always nice to show you everything that this park has to offer. And what we're actually going to do now is, before we end this vlog, head onto the Hogwarts Express. Now, because it's a Halloween Horror Nights evening here, this park's closing at 5 o'clock, and this queue to get on the Hogwarts Express at this side to Islands of Adventure, that's open until 8, is currently on 60 minutes. It's probably overestimated, but still, what we're going to do is actually go over to Islands and get on the train back this mm -hmm. way, because we're going to Horror Nights tonight because it's only a 10 minute wait that way. That is much needed. Yeah, let's go and give it a go. It only took us about 10 minutes to walk round to Islands of Adventure and of course to Hogsmeade where we're going to take the train back over to London King's Cross, Diagon Alley and of course the Universal Studios Florida. Worth pointing out you do need a park hopper ticket to ride this attraction uh, because of course it is transportation between both parks. is the Hogwarts Express and my favourite thing about going in this direction over to studios is the fact that the train actually comes in forwards but it looks the part because obviously when it leaves here it goes backwards and yeah it's really nice getting that view of it coming in just here. We can take you aboard on here so let's go and ride the Hogwarts Express. <laughs> And yeah, of course, you're coming to the station. Really nice in here. Yeah, like I said, my only negative is the fact that the train comes into this station backwards. Like, I love the reveal, you know, when you're going in the way that we've just come. Yeah, it's very nice in here. And obviously, there's two trains, and they kind of go back and forwards on the system. And it really does feel like you're back in London walking down here as well. Like all the adverts on the side. Sometimes they have somebody like busking down here as well, which really adds to the atmosphere of it all. It just makes it feel like London. Yeah, you know, they have like a sax player down here sometimes. And yeah, it's really good. We step out of King's Cross Station, that brings us to the end of our vlog from Universal Studios Florida. What a brilliant day, we've really got into detail in this park and we've seen pretty much everything. It's been great, all the rides. Oh, we got some of the Death Eaters just walking around here as well. Oh! <laughs> really out into the ambience. I like how Charlotte's like not scared at all. <laughs> nice little touch at the end, of course they're in for Halloween Horror Nights. And 
That's gonna do it Friday here at Universal Studios Florida. We've had a really good day in this park today. We've really made the most of it. And it just shows you how many different attractions there is inside this park. A lot of the time, it just get overshadowed by Islands of Adventure next door. But you know what? There is some brilliant rides in this park, isn't oh, there? There is some really good ones in this park, including my favorite, Rip Ride Rocket. Hey, along with that, of course, the Wisdom World is amazing, isn't it? I mean, you walk around Diagon Alley, it's incredible. Great to get back on Gringotts as well. An absolutely phenomenal indoor roller coaster. And of course, things like Men in Black, great fun attraction, Transformers, The Mummy, brilliant indoor oh, coaster. Oh, I love The Mummy, it's so good. Oh, I love it so much. But uh, yeah, it's a great park. And then of course, you've got a few of the weaker attractions at the resort here as well, such as Jimmy Fallon and Fast and Furious, um, you know, which aren't great. However, um, yeah, there's some other great rides here. I do like the setting for this park with the big lake in the middle. And like I mentioned earlier, they're currently working on a new nighttime show uh, that's probably gonna launch next year. It's gonna feature drone technology. That'll be great here on this lake. That is much needed. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, I can't wait. But uh, of course, we've still got some more universal content for you to all enjoy, including Halloween Horror Nights and also Islands of Adventure, the park next door. Back on the Hulk, Velocicoaster, Spider-Man, and of course, the War Ride. No, not Popeye. We've had a lot of comments coming in. People have been saying, are we gonna see Charlotte on Popeye and Bluto's Bill's Rat Barges? Are we gonna see that? So I wasn't going to do it. But because you all want me to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it might fix your voice as well, Charlotte. Yeah, it might do. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, if you haven't already, check out our vlogs from the new Minion Land, where we went on the new attraction, took you along with the on-ride footage. And along with that as well, we did Volcano Bay, and of course, staying over uh, in the beautiful Cabana Bay Beach Resort as well. But uh, here from the studios, that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you in the next vlog. <laughs>